Fishing with Bob and TJ is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Daiwa Rods and Reels, committed to total quality. Humminbird Wide, fish wide open. And Raider Fiberglass Truck Tops, today's value leader. I guess you better take this extra casting rod along, Bob. I think I've got all the tackle we need, grab the life jackets, and we'll be on our way. Hi, welcome to Gone Fishing. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick. And I'm TJ Schwanke. Today we're in the west central part of Manitoba, in the parkland region of the province, in Duck Mountain Provincial Park. This area is a real mecca for anglers, and it contains hundreds of lakes, stocked with one of the widest varieties of fish in the province. But today we're in for a real treat. We're going to be fishing for muskie on Twin Lakes. Now unfortunately, we have to leave the big ranger at home. This lake is only accessible with smaller boats, and we've made arrangements for one to be there. Stay with us for some great musky action. We'll see you on the water. Whoa! <laughs> hey everyone, TJ. Come right up to the weed. Close to the weeds there, didn't you? Yeah, I got a. I just switched baits. Put on something with a little more flash on it. It's all silver blades. Ooh. It's like a nice pretty one. decent size one too. Looks like he must go right around the back here. I'll let him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes. So, kind of a unique fisher here with... Whoa! <laughs> We're at uh, Twin Lake. Uh, not too far from Child Lake in the Duck Mountains. and. Um, one of the few lakes in the province that has musky in it. He's screaming some I don't think he knew he was hooked there for the first no. part. No, he didn't put up much of a fight to start with, but he hit further out than I could see. I just switched to this white and silver spinner bait. Wow, did they <laughs> keep moving. And that was the second cast with it. And he's getting wrapped up around the line. I gotta be a little bit careful here. We don't have any leaders on these. Nice yeah. Oh, he's going again. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of playing possum there for a minute. They can help you land him here. Okay, I'll try and get him. He looks like he's hooked pretty good. Well, they got some big old teeth on him, don't they? <laughs> well, he sure, sure did some aerials, didn't he? There we go. There's a Black Mountain's muskie right there. I was saying it's kind of unique that they have muskies up here. The whole Duck Mountains is like that, though. There's um, a lot of species of fish here that you can't catch uh, in most other parts of the province and certainly aren't native to this area, but it gives a visiting angler a real opportunity to come and catch some different fish. And why did he get that in there? Good. There we go. And that's the neat thing about the Duck Mountains. There's a whole bunch of different species of fish here that you don't find in other parts of the province. And you know, you can come up here and catch them, and there's things like Arctic char and a whole bunch of different kinds of trout, and he's musky and smallmouth bass, and whoa, there he goes. So it's a really neat place to come. You can come up here and catch fish that uh, you may not be able to afford to go. Like Arctic char is a prime example, musky are a prime example. If you can't afford to go to lodges or pay to fly into places to catch them, you can drive right up here, and it's a really nice place to come. And what powerful fish. Look what he did to my spinner bait. That's had three casts out of it. I think I gotta get the pliers out and do a little work to this one if I'm gonna use it again, but it was well worth it. That one came right up in that thick weeds, didn't he? Yeah. I think that sun's getting a little more intense down there looking for some more cover. Well this uh this silver spinner bait blade just shines like crazy. You can see it flickering from a long ways away. He scared me when he had <laughs> 
I wasn't expecting it. Boy, it's nice clear water. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, he's under the boat. <laughs> They're notorious for that too. Boy, look at him roll and twist down there. I can't see him. He's right underneath the yeah. boat. The water is so clear here though. Beautiful. I am. Maybe one of us had the opportunity to fish for muskies before. No, this is the first. <laughs> I can see why it's so addicting though. I'll get him for you if he doesn't give me a bath first. There we go. Got him? Yeah. Look at that beautiful fish. Again, he's caught on the front hook. This treble in the back isn't doing very much. Oh, Barbless hook comes out real nice. They're obviously hitting it really aggressively though. Oh, he's smacking. And again, I just got that spinnerbait back in shape and it's pretty piled up again. Well, I think I'm going to throw one of those on here. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. I was pretty wild. I just had a fish follow me up and what I did, he came right up. So what you want to do is I was called figure eighting and you just take your rod and go and figure eights down there. And he just latched onto it and took off screaming, but it's pretty hard to get a good hook set into them when you only got six inches of line out. You got to be pretty careful. And he ran in a couple times and I lost him. That's a good tip with muskie. Muskie love to follow hooks and they rely a lot on their eyesight to take a bait. And that's why they'll follow. And a lot of times it's pretty hard to convince them. So they'll follow it right up to the boat. And if you stop reeling, they're not going to grab it. So what you want to do is just stick that rod tip in and just start figure eight as hard as you can. Quite often it might entice him to bite. In that case there it worked really well. Unfortunately he just came off the hook, but I wouldn't have caught him otherwise. We'll try another cast, see if we can get him again. I'm with Department of Natural Resources Fisheries Technician Ken Kansas. Now Ken, you've got quite a unique opportunity up in the Duck Mountains. Some musky fishing which isn't available in a lot of other areas. Yeah, there's a couple a couple of lakes in the Duck Mountains, the one by the name of Line Lake and uh, Twin Lake. Line Lake's got Master Angler Muskie. It's the only Master Angler Muskie fishery in Manitoba. And actually, Twin Lake is the pretty much the only other available uh, Muskie fishery in Manitoba for angling. Now, how long ago were these lakes stocked? Uh, Line Lake is a little bit of an early history, and there's a it's a little befuddled of actually what year went in where sometimes that happens but Twin Lake was stocked in 1989 with about 20,000 musky fry and uh, by fry I mean uh, an inch three quarters of an inch long and they've done quite well in there uh, they it was quite phenomenal actually the way we discovered this lake uh, I didn't get to the area until uh, about 1990 in 1989 this was stocked and I actually went into Twin Lake to assess brown trout stocking because it was primarily a, a trout stocked lake now, I went in with a few gill nets just to assess some of the strong ear classes because that lake post 89 was thought to have winter killed. Now, if it winter killed, hence all the muskie would be dead, then they stocked it with brown trout or they, the Department of Natural Resources. So I went in to assess these stocks and uh, we were just floating out over this cabbage, uh, bed of cabbage weeds and uh, I thought I saw a pike and obviously it wasn't a pike because a, a muskie's got a unique characteristic separating them from pike and that's those vertical bars on the side. And, uh, we went in a day later with our angling gear and just whacked lots of muskie and they were about 25, 26 inches long, all about the same size. Well, what is in a, that's a very tiny lake, what's in there for forage? It's poor forage. Actually, we were in last year with some uh, beamish nets, which nets which collect small fish, uh, live trapping, and all they basically had were fathead minnows and uh, brook sticklebacks, which uh, fathead minnows can get fairly big. You probably use them uh, with some live baiting in, uh, in other provinces, but uh, they're not going to attain their maximum size in a forage base that small. Now, with the small size of the lake and it's not very deep, can these fish handle the, the winters in there? Are they going to, is there a chance of them winter killing or, or the oxygen levels getting yeah. too low? That's one of the limiting factors besides the forage in that lake is it's a shallow lake. I think the bottom end, uh, the deepest point of the lake is about 19 and a half feet deep and, the, and actually about 50% of that lake, the volume of it is taken up by weeds. So you've got this small pocket of water in, in, in the center. Now, the bigger these fish get, the more their oxygen demand is going to be. And we might have to get into a program whereby we maybe try and remove, remove some of these larger fish and find a suitable lake to put them in because they just won't make it through these tough winters. Woo! <laughs> he's a nosy hook now. He's a nosy hook now. 
cast right into those reeds in there and gave about two cranks on the handle and fell at the top and he swam out right to here. Didn't even know he was hooked. I saw this swirl when he hit in there. Pretty shallow. Well, they sure are aerial though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he scared me when he came out that close. And are they ever scrappy? Oh. Under the boat. <laughs> Not done yet. No. Nope. I may have to go around you. Yeah, we got a little less room in here than we. Oh. <laughs> Up here and fight them? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Alright, Now you'll probably turn around and go to the back again. There he comes. There he They like it under the boat. Yeah. We're using these big bucktail spinning spinners and uh, must be feed primarily by sight. And they can sure see these. Oh, I broke them off. Get them out. <laughs> Oh no! Bob's had this spinner on all day and it has been hot. We had one of them in the boat. Now there's one with a muskie. <laughs> well, you know, I got my money's worth with that one anyway. That fish gave me a great fight. Some one of these days I'll get one long enough to get a picture of it. Yeah, well, it was all wrapped around. It wasn't swallowed that deep. It was just hanging on the edge, but he'd wrapped it all around himself. And it just caught either on a gill plate or on a tooth or something and broke right off. Like I was saying, musky feed primarily by sight and what Bob was using was a, a big bucktail spinner bait with silver hammered blades on it and it was white and red and it showed up really good in this water. Um, I know you could see it probably 10 feet down there and I think that was the key with the muskies. They could really see it and also it does send out a lot of vibration and muskies feed a lot by vibration as well. Well, now it's back to the drawing board. I gotta get into the tackle box <laughs> and try and come up with something else. And I say this again, we mentioned this before, Muskie is a fish of 10,000 casts. Takes a long time to go through a tackle box. <laughs> but we got to get back at it and try. It's uh, amazing the people we've met over the years in fishing, though. That's how we ended up here at the Duck Mountains, was, you know, some people we'd met at tournaments. And made a lot of good contacts over the years at, you know, places like that. Well, you know, the, the people in the fishing world are are for the most part very friendly and uh, like you said we met, we met some of these people through tournaments and I was fortunate enough to be invited up to the Dauphin area last winter to do an ice fishing show on Lake Dauphin and uh, met Bill Griffin up there. He kind of set that trip up and said, gee, you got to come back to the Duck Mountains in the summertime. There's lots of opportunities and uh, he introduced me to another fellow, Mark Vespi, who was uh, at, one, at that time president of the Swan Valley Sport Fishing Enhancement Group, and they've had a lot to do with what's gone up in this area, gone around here, and it's uh, it's been just great. It's, there's no way you could come on a trip like this without some help from people like that either. It's just, you know, there's too much area to cover, too many lakes, and, you know, they've really helped us get keyed in on, you know, what is the best fishing, what to use, and where to go, and, you know, that's, that's the really neat thing about fishing. I don't know a lot of other sports like that where people will help you out that much. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that was kind of unreal. <laughs> We're just moving across the lake to another spot where we'd had a few follows about an hour ago. Going to give it another try. I thought we'd troll across. Just cut back on the motor and bang. <laughs> I uh, was just reeling in. I couldn't have been 20 feet behind the boat. He must have come four feet out of the water there. <laughs> <laughs> Not done yet. <laughs> They are aerial though, aren't they? That's incredible. I can get them up here. I um. Oh, I need it. There he is. I'm gonna bring them over here and see if you can get them. Oh, I can better find those pliers right away. Now so these fish can get up to about 35 pounds. I don't know if they wouldn't hear. The forage base is, is pretty small in here, just sticklebacks and and chubs, but. Uh, in some areas they can get up to about 35 pounds and the world record is somewhere near 70 pounds. I can't imagine what kind of a fight they'd give you. You know where those players are, TJ? <laughs> right here. Oh, is he ever scarred up too? Ooh. There you are. They sure look pretty down there. You can see those bars down the side of them. That's what really makes them distinguish from the pike. The pike have more spots on their side. These have the real distinct bars. 
and they fight a little bit different than a oh, pike do. They ever. Kidding. Oh, they grab me. Whoa! He got me good. Uh, try that again. <laughs> He's in here. Uh, fishing so good in Duck Mountains, the fish jump right into your boat. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> Unreal. There, TJ, I got him upside down. Now this fish will uh, should calm down holding him like this. You're gonna have to get the hook out. Boy, he ate that treble right inside of him. Well, you won't see that too often. <laughs> Trying to be as careful as I can here, but boy, he sure got that in him. You know, Bob, I'm going to get you to take a couple of pictures of well, them. Well, I'm holding them first, so <laughs> okay. snap a couple of quick ones. Get her back in the water. I got a shower out of that, so I deserve to get a picture. <laughs> that was pretty wild. They're jumping right in the boat. One more. You ever seen that happen before? <laughs> to get her back in the water. Just hang on to her for a second here. What you want to do with these fish is just hold them until they give a tail kick and when they do and they're ready to go they'll let you know. She sure got beat up. I don't know if that was from jumping in the boat. Well it sure didn't help. That was unreal. She just came right out of the water and in. Oh, girl. I noticed a few big scars on her before there she goes. when we were bringing her in the first time. Okay, she's just a little stressed. I don't think that was. <laughs> Give her a little squeeze on the tail, she'll go. There she goes. Yeah. Well, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. I've never had a fish <laughs> jump right in the boat. <laughs> and that's your first muskie. Congratulations. Yep. <laughs> now, earlier today, we were talking to the regional fisheries biologist, Ken Kansas, and he was saying that. This lake was stocked with fry, with musky fry in 1989. So they've done quite well here in the last uh, six or so years. They're up to, I don't know, what do you figure, seven, eight pounds? Yeah, I've heard of them that big in here. And it's one of only a couple lakes you can catch uh, musky in, in the province. Uh, Manitoba just doesn't have a lot of musky. Ontario's where they really start. And so it's kind of a unique fishery that way. But yeah, they've really grown here. Now we were talking with lodge owner Brian Forbes, who's actually running our camera boat for us today. And, he was saying that they're quite worried about them winter killing in here and they may use this as a brood facility and start taking some adults out for stocking other lakes in the area. So it'd be kind of neat if they could. They seem to have really done well up here in the Duck Mountains. Well, it gives an opportunity for uh, people that don't, you know, can't get to some of the more eastern areas that have more musky, an opportunity to fish for these uh, fish. Saw one just rise behind us here. Yeah. <laughs> We've had several follows and managed to hook on to a few. That's exciting when they fall. Oh, is it? That's the one thing about muskies, they're notorious for that. And in this clear water, they prefer a lot clearer water than, than even pike do. And they, I guess they also require a lot more higher oxygen levels to exist than pike. Pike can live just about anywhere at any water temperature. But anyway, they, the, the muskies will, will follow your bait right to the boat and make a couple passes at it. And a lot of times you'll watch a muskie fisherman stick his rod in the water and start swirling it around in a figure eight. And quite often the muskie will bite right at the boat if you can uh, tease them into striking. It, uh, and that's really true. Now, the other lake that has them up in this area is called Line Lake, and it's up closer to Wellman Lake. And muskie are quite a bit bigger in there. I've heard of muskie, you know, up to 25 pounds. And if you look in the Master Angler book, you'll see quite a few muskie from Line Lake. So there is the opportunity to catch bigger fish. Now, from what I've heard, though, the fish is pretty tough there, which it is on muskie waters anywhere. And here at Twin Lake, where we are, it, uh, the muskie fish is pretty good. You know, we've had a good day so far today. It looks like we'll catch some more. So it seems if you want to just catch some muskies, Twin Lake's the place to come. But if you're looking for that big elusive trophy, uh, Line Lake's pretty hard to beat. Well, we happened to see some pictures that were taken there the other day, too. And it looks like a great walleye population in Line Lake as well. Yeah, you bet. The other nice thing about some of the lakes that are near the road is they're uh, there's access for the handicap there and uh, with, with docks and piers all around, they can get wheelchairs out on it, get the kids fishing from shore. You don't need a boat to get in on, on some really good fishing in the ducks. And there's several small lakes that offer master angler fish right in this area. When you go musky fishing, make sure you take along some heavy gear. Today we're using a Daiwa 7.5 foot bait caster spooled with 10 to 14 pound Berkeley XT. Now you want to use an abrasion resistant line as these fish can get down in the weeds and put quite a strain on your line. What we are using for tackle, 
was the Northland's Bionic Bucktail. Great big spinner bait, and these work real good. Now, you can put a leader on, but you probably won't need one, as these baits are quite long, and quite often, the muskie will hit on the back hook. The leader takes away some of the action, and chances of getting bit off with a bait this long aren't very good. Fish on. Oh, that was right at the boat. Must have followed it up a long ways. Whoa! <laughs> They're unreal. They uh, musky look a lot like pike, but uh, they're really quite different. Got a lot of different habits in pike too. Usually you'll find muskies in a lot clearer water because they rely almost totally on their eyesight to feed. Boy, he's, he's going. Well, the great thing going under boats. Yeah, the great thing about this lake is there is no pike, and pike and muskie don't do that well together just because pike spawn a lot earlier than muskie. And um, the pike fry will eat a lot of the muskie. Right. <laughs> and um, that's why there isn't nearly as many muskie in a pike lake as there is pike. Just for that, you know, because they're, they're both the highest predator in the lake. And, of course, the one that hatches the earliest is going to be the one that does the most eating. The other thing about muskies, too, when they spawn, they a lot of times they'll spawn in areas <laughs> that uh, aren't real suitable. And their eggs get all silted over and they don't get the oxygen that they need. And, and a lot of the eggs don't get a chance to hatch. You got him there? Nope. Nope. <laughs> He's um comes in so nice, but he really doesn't want to be caught. He doesn't does he? want to be held. There, I got him this time. All right. Boy, look at that. They're so pretty, though. Here, get him over here and I'll... Oh, he's just barely hooked. Boy, I don't know how you kept him on. He came out of that water so hard there, those Just do a little bit of skin on the edge of his mouth. There. Wow, TJ, would you mind taking a picture for me? Not at all. That's great. I'm going to get this one back in the water. Whoa, that was quick. <laughs> You know, we've sure had a great time up here in the Duck Mountains. We had a chance to fish a variety of different species and sure met a lot of great people. We'd uh, sure like to thank Ken Kansas. He ran our camera boat for part of the day today. Brian Forbes ran it. Uh, Mark Vespi, Bill Griffin. We just had help from a lot of really good people. Make sure you join us next time on Gone Fishing. While fishing on Twin Lake, cast and crew have gone fishing with Bob and TJ, stayed at the Wellman Lake Lodge. Gone Fishing with Bob and TJ is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Daiwa Rods and Reels, committed to total quality. Hummingbird Wide, fish wide open and Raider fiberglass truck tops, today's value leader. Other support courtesy of the following companies.